you. Here we are sitting on the beach uh, near ancient Ephesus. Yes, a great place beautiful to, beach. <laughs> a great place to talk about the book of Ephesians. Uh, it's considered to have been written by Paul from uh, his Roman imprisonment. Uh, but scholars agree that it wasn't written solely to the church in Ephesus. Uh, the earliest manuscripts of the New Testament of uh, Ephesians don't have the words in Ephesus in the heading. Uh, however, it seems to have been a general letter to not only Ephesus, but to other churches in uh, the Roman province of Asia. Right. And a clue to that comes in chapter 6 when uh, the messenger carrying the letter from Rome, Tychicus, is mentioned. And he's the same person that's carrying the letter to Philemon and Colossians. So I think eventually this letter ends up to the Lycus Valley as well uh, and read by those churches uh, uh, there. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I think so, because I think Paul knew that this, not only in Ephesus, but also in the whole Roman province of Asia, that they were very, their mindset and their worldview was around principalities and powers of darkness. Well, let me read a passage sure. that uh, I think is one of the most familiar passages in the book of Ephesians. I can remember in vacation Bible school and Sunday school uh, doing things connected to this passage in Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in, in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything, to stand. So Paul two times says here, put on the full armor of God, right. and multiple times he talks about standing. So what do right. you think is the significance of well, this? Well, I think Paul knew, he, he doesn't eliminate the idea that we have struggles with spiritual powers of darkness. And that was the worldview of the early church, especially in Ephesus as we know, and, and also throughout the, the Roman province of Asia. Uh, but his answer is different where we uh, dealt before where often magic and the occult was used to manipulate powers. You know, uh, and what he, the, Paul comes up with, no, we have spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. In Christ, yeah. And so many of the new believers and the Christians that he's writing to are coming out of this pagan worldview that understood that there were a lot of principalities and powers and they controlled the earth, they controlled my life, they controlled whether my wife would have a baby or mm -hmm. not. And so they would often go to magic. They would often use the occult or they use amulets to keep away curses. Mm -hmm. But Paul's focus is Christ-centered. He's saying, yes, we're in this struggle, but it's not against flesh and blood. And Jesus Christ, his spiritual blessings in heavenly places is the answer to our struggle. Mm -hmm. So, in Christ, the spiritual blessings that we get uh, through our relationship with Him, what's the application for us today? Uh, you know, we live in a world that most people don't even believe in these spiritual forces of darkness. Yeah, unfortunately, I think, especially in Western culture, the Enlightenment worldview of there is no spiritual world, you know, everything is just the physical. Um, we, it's very easy for us not even to be sensitive to the reality of spiritual powers of darkness influencing our lives or trying to involve, you know, engage in our lives in some way to keep us from being effective in the kingdom of God. So I think it really starts with just awareness. We are in a struggle. Mm -hmm. That's what Paul says. We are in a spiritual struggle and it's not against other people. You know, it's not against flesh and blood, yeah. which we often, if you have just kind of a secular worldview, we think, oh, it's your marks, you're the problem, or this person is a problem. In reality, we miss the, the spiritual battle that is going on around us. Hmm. So I really need to take this beyond just our Sunday school experience and going through the, the various uh, items of armor but make practice it in our everyday lives, so even today. Yeah, it's just practical Christian living. Yeah.